My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you're here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. So Lord, we find ourselves in this second Friday of Lent. And Friday is a day which is maybe a little bit tougher for some of us because it calls for a little bit more sacrifice as we contemplate your passion and death. And maybe some of us at this stage are, are flagging a little bit in Lent, finding it a little bit tough after just over a week and maybe not living up to all of our resolutions and promises. So we pray, Lord, that you'll help each one of us today. And we know that we are helping one another in these times of prayer. We feel the solidarity of a Christian family, praying that you'll give each one of us the strength to respond in the ways in which you want us to, Lord, but to help us, and especially those who are, who are finding things difficult at the minute. And that's important because today's gospel essentially is a beautiful teaching that you give us about human relationships. You speak in the context of growing in virtues and comparing that of the scribes and the Pharisees. And ultimately, it's about going to heaven, how we make that path to you, Lord, especially by living a life which is infused with faith, but also a life which is infused with making every human effort that we can to, to live well. You say that unless our virtue goes deeper than that of the scribes and Pharisees, then we cannot expect to go to heaven. In one sense, I think, Lord, that this is a very high benchmark because, well, we know Jesus said these Scribes and Pharisees were people who lived out the law of Moses to kind of an extreme degree, that they, they were extremely attentive and careful about the details of their faith. And they spent a lot of time praying and fasting and studying. And they made a lot of efforts in many different ways that we look at their example and think, mm, well, maybe in some ways they did better than us. But you say that that's not enough. And why is it not enough? Well, not because all of the things that they were doing were not good in and of themselves, but essentially their life of faith, their life of prayer, their life of study is not enough to get into heaven because they don't put you, Jesus, at the center of their lives. You were not their Lord. And we know that you, Jesus, are the basis for all the good things that happen in our life. You're the basis for all the good things that we want to do, that we treat one another well. or We, we try to grow in virtues because essentially we see that you live them out and that we want to live them out through your example and because we want to become more like you. And so if you're not at the center of all of our efforts, then of course nothing that we do is going to be enough. And look, that's essentially the difference between uh, ourselves and the Pharisees. We want to convert and to believe in the good news. Those are the words that we hear on Ash Wednesday whenever we get the ashes. We want to convert. Well, that means that we want to make changes in our life so that you're at the centre. So in this time of Lent, we see uh, moments in our life or different things that are maybe very important to us. But you're not concretely at the centre of those things, Jesus. And you know, then we see through the light of your spirit that those are things, those are moments that we need to convert, that we can't continue down a path where you are not absolutely at the center of our life or you're not absolutely center, center of those things that we're doing. So that's a big question for us. Are the things that I do in my daily life, are the things that I think are important to me in this moment, are they really about you, Jesus? And if they're not, then I absolutely need to convert. And I need to believe the good news. In other words, I need to, to hear what you say and to put it into practice. So when we read about these Pharisees and scribes in the gospel today, let's not rush to judge them for being hypocrites. Uh, but let's just say and acknowledge that they didn't put you at the center of their life, Jesus. And any one of us in that sense can be uh, a scribe or a Pharisee if we do lots of very pious things but if Jesus you're not absolutely at the center of our life of prayer our life of faith or our, our, our daily efforts then phew, no good we need to convert and to believe in the good news and specifically about human relationships you say anyone who is angry with his brother or sister will be liable for judgment 
Now, in reality, we get angry with people all the time. Well, maybe that's just me. But concretely speaking, other people at times do get on our nerves. They do things that rub us up the wrong way and we don't like it. And yeah, sometimes the anger that we have, uh, that we experience as a result of things that people say or do is righteous because um, people have done us a wrong. And, um, you know, we, we, we have anger as a kind of a natural reaction to that. But let's listen very carefully to what you say, Jesus, in the gospel. You don't say uh, that anyone who is angry with his brother or sister because X, Y, Z, giving a whole list of reasons why they have made you angry. You just say, look, anybody who is angry with your brother or sister. And I think it's helpful to think of this more in terms of somebody who is kind of living in a state of being angry with somebody else, kind of like living uh, with holding onto a grudge or huffing with somebody. And that's literally what you say in the gospel, Jesus, the one who is being angry, which means that somebody who makes being angry a way of life. And here's a big distinction because it's not just about getting cross with somebody for something that they have done or as a reaction, but somebody who kind of perpetuates a state of being cross or being angry or being huffy with somebody else. And that's certainly what you're trying to, to warn us against today. St. Jose Maria said something very beautiful at the same time, I think quite difficult to live out. Uh, you find this in, in one of the books that he wrote called Furrow, it's point 805. And it's hard. I mean, as we listen to this Jesus, we're thinking, mm, this, is, this is tough, but look, this is good for us. It's Lent. Forgiveness. To forgive with one's whole heart, with no trace of a grudge, will always be a wonderfully fruitful disposition to have. That was Christ's attitude on being nailed to the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. From this came your salvation and mine. Well, look, we got to put that front and center here to say look well the reason that we would forgive is because jesus you forgave as you were on the cross and there's nothing that can top that so let's think a little bit now jesus help us to pray about grudges bearing grudges but also maybe being the object of somebody else's grudge now i remember as a young child when i was about three my younger cousin was born and that was not greeted with uh, great joy. And let me tell you, in my life, she stole all my attention and I did not like that one bit. And I spent the next, I don't know, three or four years uh, after that being pretty cross about that and essentially bearing a grudge against my little cousin just because she was younger than me. And uh, we have family videos of me behaving in an appalling way towards her, shouting at her and telling her she's not allowed to basically have fun or she's not allowed to join in our games. And to be frank, I cringe whenever I think about that or whenever I see those videos because well, it's just stupid, childish behaviour. But I remember after a couple of years just deciding, well, look, there's no point in being cross. Why Why? why kind of huff at the fact that she is younger and she got more attention than I did? Because in actual fact, I don't think she did. But it's just a childish way of thinking. And we mightn't like to think about this, but bearing a grudge is childish. It's unbecoming for a Christian to behave in that way. But it is a struggle for us. and We have to persevere, Lord, we know. And we need a lot of help in order to be able to forgive. So, Jesus, we're not saying that we want to be forgiving just automatically, but we want to concretely pray for your help to be able to do that so that if we're bearing a grudge against somebody else, well, this Lent is concretely a time for us to say, I don't want that anymore. Now, being an object of somebody else's grudge or dislike is extremely difficult. There's not a lot we can do sometimes if somebody just does not like us and are holding things against us. But they didn't really like you much either, Jesus. And the gospel is full of stories about how different groups of people treated you in an appalling manner. And yet you did not react in the way that sometimes we do. But it hurts whenever people are huffing with us or bearing a grudge against us. And we need a lot of perseverance. We need a lot of help from our brothers and sisters. And maybe with time, maybe with prayer, maybe with seeking good and happy friendships in our, in our life, then we will get the grace that we need to overcome the pain of being the target of somebody else's dislike. But again, Jesus, give us the grace for that. Look, this is the year of St. Joseph as well. 
And in this whole question of human relationships, I think he's a pretty good example because he was a man who lived the virtues extremely well. And in the moment after the Annunciation, whenever he learned that uh, our mother Mary was with child, how did he react? He reacted with a lot of supernatural grace. He was obviously extremely hurt at what he had discovered, but he was still full of love and very discreet. And he wanted to uh, end the relationship that he had with uh, our mother Mary uh, in a way which was very prudent and very loving in actual fact. So look, let us go to Joseph to live out our Lent well, because he responded to all of the graces that God gave him, even though he was hurting, even though he maybe would have humanly felt um, desire to do all manner of things, but he didn't. He made recourse to faith and he made recourse to uh, seeking what you essentially wanted for his life, Lord. So let's go to Joseph to live our Lent well and to pray that all of our human relationships will be more Christian. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me during this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.